So welcome everyone to our session seven for our review select alpha majorship. So for this session, we will be tackling the different fields once again, uh, ranging from crop sciences to plant uh, pathology, entomology, weed science. And then we will go through uh, animal science, soil science, agri-entrepreneurship, management, farm management, uh, fisheries. Ayan. So those are the topics that we will be covering for this session. And I hope that you are doing well with your mock exams. Ayan. So and daming uh I'm proud na nung last na mock exam is maraming nakaka uh kuha na almost perfect na scores. So that's a good job on your side. Yan. Thank you for uh, listening. Thank you rin sa na you are really studying. Again, uh Itong AFA is a really a very diverse na major since hindi lang siya iisang, iisang field. Kumbaga, it's a combination of a lot of fields. And ayun din yung sinasabi ko rin no first session na uh, we as BS Agriculture, back in my undergraduate, we are always being told na uh, the agriculture uh, students are a jack of all trades because we are studying not only uh, the sciences but we are also dealing with economics, we are dealing with communication, we are dealing with entrepreneurship, we are dealing with engineering, uh, uh, ano pa ba? vet med, y- y- so it is somehow a uh, converse- convergence of all of those fields, all of those topics. So, and Again, uh, as an introduction, I'm really encouraging you to take notes. Sa ating uh, session na ito, you can answer first. I, tulad ng sinasabi ko for the, for the last session, you can have a paper with you. And uh, of course, in that paper, mag, ano kayo, mag, gawa kayo ng dalawang columns. Dalawang columns, and then, dun nyo ilalagay ang inyong uh, answers. Ganun. So, Wait lang ha. Doon ilalagay ang inyong answers. So, ayan. Para you can know kung ano yung mga alam nyo na beforehand at saka kung ano yung mga uh, kailangan nyo pang i-review. Alright? Wait lang. Okay, so let us start with item number one. So number one, uh, this disease, this kidney disease of cattle caused by the microscopic bacteria transmitted through drinking water. So what is this disease? Kindly disregard this word. That is caused by a microscopic bacteria transmitted through drinking water. So A, ketosis, B, brucelliosis, C, tendonitis, or letter D, leptospirosis. So you can answer on your uh, paper. So the answer for this one is letter D. Actually, it's 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 letter D, uh, leptospirosis. So let's discuss uh, in detail kung ano nga ba yung mga nasa choices natin. So A, yung ketosis. So it is a process that happens when your body doesn't have enough carbohydrates to burn for energy. So ketosis is uh, nangyayari dun sa sikat ngayon na ano yun? Keto diet. Ayan. So if it doesn't have enough energy 
enough carbohydrates, ito yung nangyayaring process. Alright, so next is yung brucellosis. It is a bacterial infection naman. Uh, it spreads from uh, animals to people. Most commonly, people are infected by eating raw or unpasteurized dairy products. Uh, sometimes, the bacteria that cause brucellosis can spread through the air or through direct contact with infected animals. So these diseases that we are discussing here, most especially in animal science, you could uh, browse through them. Actually, I already uh, gave you some definitions of the different diseases that happens for each animal. Ayan. So in the last sessions, andon yung mga crazy chick disease. Yung mga, ayan. So brucellosis is caused by a bacteria. Ayan. So next is yung uh, tendonitis. So in tendonitis, ito actually is not something that happens uh, in animals specifically. So it is the phenomenon when a tendon swells ayan, after a tendon injury. So this can happen uh, especially for humans. So it can cause joint pain, stiffness, and affect how a tendon moves. So here, it was also stated that you can that you can treat mild tendon injuries yourself, and should feel better within two to three weeks. So, uh, just to eliminate this from the choices, tendonitis is a, uh, a situation that happens for humans. So perhaps this could be useful for those who are majoring in physical education or health. All right. And of course, yung answer natin, which is lep leptospirosis. Leptospirosis can be isolated from the kidneys and the, re the reproductive tract of infected cattle and are shed directly to other cattle in urine, semen, or uterine discharges. So on leptospirosis, uh, it can be transmitted through water. As what we uh, we also know, di ba, sa, kapag may flood, sabi nila, so if meron nung urine from a uh, mouse, so it can be transmitted sa, sa people because it is caused by a microscopic bac bacteria. Ayan. So again, leptospirosis is the disease uh, in the kidney of cattle that is caused by the microscopic bacteria transmitted through drinking water. Okay, so next for the second item, we have MG50, Pag-asa 1, and Pag-asa 2 are improved cultivars of which plant? A, mungo, B, tomato, C, pepper, or letter D, cauliflower. So if you will look at the question itself, it is an objective question. So you need to be familiarized with the different uh, or the common the common varieties or cultivars that are being improved here specifically in the Philippines. So, for example, if you if we are talking about rice, we have uh, the recent uh, innovation from uh, field rice, I think, and iri. It's the golden rice, diba? So, uh, you must be knowledgeable about that. And in this case, the answer for this one is letter A, which is mang bean or mongo. So actually, in, in my undergraduate, we work on pag-asa 1 and pag-asa 2, and then pag-asa 5 and pag-asa 8. Ayan. So ayun yung pinag-crossbreed namin noong undergrad. So ang, ang parang ginawa namin, as what I've mentioned sa past, se sa mga sessions natin, na yung pollination o yung breeding in plants happens either in self or crossbreed, di ba? So when we say self-pollination, uh, self it happens on plants, katulad ng monggo, na ang kanilang reproductive organs ay nasa iisang flower. Yun. So in that, uh, in that flower, nandun na yung male at saka yung female reproductive organ. So which means nandun na yung pollen grains, nandun na yung anther, yung stamen, ganyan. Tapos, andun na rin yung stigma tsaka yung style. Yun. So, yung stigma tsaka yung style, those are the female reproductive organs of the flower, whereas yung stamen, uh, anther, tsaka yung pollen grains, those are the male. Alright? So, when we do 
I self pollination happens naturally. So if you grow mung bean, ang para mangyayari diyan after some time perhaps one one to three months, one to one to or three months, mangyayari diyan may mga tutubong yellow na flowers. Thus if you let those ye- yellow flowers grow by itself after two weeks meron na yang one to two weeks meron na yang uh, pods yung pods doon natin makikita yung mga buto na kinakain nating munggo ayun yun. so that is self pollination on the other hand when we say cross pollination cross pollination happens when we transfer the pollen grains or yung male uh, reproductive part ng uh, isang flower to another flower. So we can do this by using two different varieties. So for example, we will try to mate uh, pag-asa 1 and pag-asa 2. So when we cross-pollinate them, gagamit tayo ng needle, ng karayom, ganyan. It's a detailed process, pero we will, we, we will not be doing or I will not be discussing a lot of that in this session. Pero yung needle, parang tatanggalin mo dun yung pollen grains, tas ililipat mo sa kabilang bulaklak. Ayun. So, you will notice that the seeds or the plants that will be grown mula dun sa seeds na iyong pinaglagyan ng pollen grains, ay it will have the mixed characteristics of both varieties. So, if successful ang, ang crossbreeding or yung cross-pollination mo, yeah, it will have the traits of both species, of both uh, varieties, rather. Ayan. So here are some of the different cultivars of mung bean. Okay, number three. So, to avoid infestation of banana with soil-borne fungus, one should blank. A, inoculate soil with microbial inoculants against the pathogen. B, a practice crop crop rotation c practice plant disease resistant variety practice culturing plant disease resistant varieties or letter d spray with malathion so to avoid infestation of banana with soil borne fungus one should so the correct answer here is letter a, which is inoculate soil with microbial inoculants against the pathogen. So actually, this is one of, uh, this is our topic when we uh, proposed a research project to the, to the Department of Science and Technology. So our project is on uh, producing a microbial inoculant against a specific pathogen or a fungal pathogen on coffee naman. So when we uh, use microbial inoculants, yung kasing ginagawa ng mga microbial inoculants natin is that they act like uh, biological agents against that specific pathogen. So for example, dun sa isang, uh, sa, sa paligid ng yung banana tree, meron dong fung- fungus that is devastative para sa iyong uh, plant. So, ang gagawin mo, when you put microbial inoculant, yung mangyayari doon is that yung mga microbial inoculants natin, it is composed of bacteria na na nag-work against the fungi. So, that process itself is called antibiosis. Or meron silang tinatawag na anta, wait lang. Meron silang tinatawag na antagonistic antagonistic association. So from the term itself, antagonistic, kapag sinabing antagonist, it's kaaway, it's kontrabida, kumbaga. So, ang ginagawa noong bacteria is that ina-antagonize niya yung growth ng pathogen na iyon. Ayan. So this is something that you can do uh, for farm managing a specific uh, crop. Ganun. So, uh, UPLB Biotech is producing a lot of this microbial inoculant. So, we have Mycovam. Mycovam. 
We also have yung mga bago, Hormogrow. Ito mga to naman, it's on fertilizer, ganyan naman sila. So, these uh, technologies are using the nanotechnology, using nanotechnology para gawin yung mga produktong yan. Again, ang fungi na yan at saka yung bacteria na nasa microbial inoculant ay mayroong antagonistic association or also called antibiosis. Yan. So kumbaga, kapag kunwari, ilalagay natin yan sa isang petri dish, ang mangyayari dyan, kunwari, ito yung bacteria. Yung, yung kulay blue ay yun yung bacteria. Yun namang red, ito yung fungi. So kapag inilagay natin yan dyan, kapag kinulture natin sila together, hindi sila mag-mimit or hindi may infest ng isa yung isa. Kung hindi, magkakaroon ng, parang kunwari, ito yung zone of inhibition. Meron tayong tinatawag na zone of inhibition. Which means, parang ano lang yon ayun yung uh, zone na dapat nandoon yung bacteria. So, ayan yung zone of inhibition, kunwari. So, ganito yung kakalabasan kapag pinagmix mo silang dalawa. Hindi sila magmimit. Kasi nga, meron silang antagonistic association. So, ayan yung pwede gawin para maano ang infestation sa banana. Okay? That's the best answer. So next, let's go with number four. Bovine tropical thaleurosis is a tick-borne infect infection caused by Clarea annulata, an intracellular protozoan parasite. To treat this, you need to perform to perform A, vaccination, B, culling, C, inject the cattle with vitamins, or letter D, transfer the infected animal. So, in questions like this, dapat hindi tayo ma-overwhelm agad na hala, hindi ko alam yung bovine tropical thaleriosis. Diba? So, parang kapag pagpagtitignan mo agad yun, talaga ma-overwhelm ka. Tapos baka mas lalo kang hindi ma maganahan na sagutan yung, yung specific question na yun. Uh, you need to first look at the choices and try to eliminate as much as you can. So first, kapag ba meron itong tick-borne infection na to, ikakal mo na ba agad sila? Again, what is culling? So culling is disregarding a specific animals, right? So ito yung mga underperforming na mga animals. Next, i-injectan mo ba sila ng vitamins? So vitamins is of course it uh, it targets to enhance the nutrition of the cattle and not to uh, treat this specific intracellular protozoan parasite. And of course, yung letter D, transfer infected animal. So kapag tin-transfer mo sila, the possibility is the protozoan parasite will also be with them. So along the process, there could be transmission of this specific disease. And it can further uh, infect more cattle. So it is not practical. Thus, the answer is letter A, which is vaccination. So, ayan. so this is an example of a disease na kailangan ng vaccination to treat. Again, uh, in... In answering questions like this, in animal science, in plant pathology, and you need to think like a farm manager. You need to think like a farm manager. Na kapag ako yung manager ng farm na to, anong gagawin ko? Diba? So, una-una yung culling, hindi siya practical kasi papatayin mo na ba agad yung, uh, yung cattle mo? Papatayin mo na ba siya agad? Eh, magkano ang isang cattle ngayon? It ranges from, I think, 15 to 25,000 or above or, or, or even more. So that would be a huge loss if you will do that. You know, injecting cattle with vitamins naman, it could be a good step, but then it is not targeting our specific problem that is mentioned here in this uh, item. And of course, you're transferring that goes with cultural management. When we say cultural management, handa ka bang handa ka bang anong tawag dito? Handa ka bang ma-transmit yung parasite na yun towards others. 
Ayan. So, those are the, the, the questions that you need to ask yourself. Okay? Next, number five. So, deforestation causes the destruction of coastal marine resources as a result of A, a flooding, B, siltation, C, lowering of sand. That should be salinity, siguro. Salinity, or, and letter D, increased water temperature. So, ngayon, we need to think holistically. We need to think holistically. So, paano naka-apekto ang pagkawala ng mga puno in the coastal marine resources? Remember, uh, this is somehow a uh, convergence na ng agroforestry and crop science tsaka fisheries, di ba? So, here, what happens when there is a lack of trees is that nagkakaroon ng mas tumataas ang temperature natin. So, that could affect yung mga marine ano natin by increasing water temperature. Okay, so that is also a result of deforestation. Okay. Number six. So here. The result of a seed germination test showed that out of 120 seeds used in the test, only 98 germinated. Thus, the, the percentage germination of the seed is A, 81.67, B, 76.18, uh, C, 68.71, or letter D, 87.76. So, to answer this one, you need to always to know the formula. So, in calculating the seed germination, the percent germination, that is the total of germinated seeds over the number of seeds in total times 100. So, kapag ginawa nyo yung, yung calculation na yan, ang kakalabasan yan is 81.67. So, here is the way to do it. Nandiyan na sa screen. So, I will give you time to take note of that process. So, 98 over 120 times 100. So, you can do that manually during the exam. Or I don't know if nag-aalaw ba ng calculator sa inyo. Okay. Next. Number seven. Coxidiosis normally control is normally a controllable disease but one is the most expensive for poultry industry so what could you do to deal with coccidiosis hindi ko na okay so a inoculation and vaccination b kill and burn infected flock c reduce Bird parasite concentration using drugs or letter D select resistance strains. Resistant strains. Okay. The answer for this one is letter C, which is using yung ating mga uh ano na naman to uh gamot. Yan, yung mga drugs for bird parasite concentration. Okay. So that is why it is a controllable disease. At saka, may mention din sa question na it is the most controllable disease pero siya ay most expensive. So you need to look at alin dito ang pinaka-expensive siguro, di ba? Sa mga choices natin, alin ang pinaka-expensive? And of course, it is using drugs. It is using specific medicine uh, created to tackle or to tackle to aid yung ating coccidiosis. So even those little details na nasa question, you need to be mindful of those. And most expensive, normally controllable. Okay? Next, number eight, before we take a short break. So internal parasite that adversely affect the feed utilization 
that is prescribed. So A, diarrhea, B, roundworm, uh, C, cho cholera, or letter D, influenza. Internal parasite. So, isa lang dyan ang uh, parasite. So, I hope that you answered letter D, which is roundworm. So, in order for you to uh, to answer this one, kailangan familiar tayo kung alin dyan ang parasite. Diba? So, influenza is a virus. Diarrhea is uh, somehow caused by viruses as well. Right? Infection by, by bacteria. Yung mga yan. Mga preformed toxins and, and other organisms. So, uh, ano pa yung isa? Cholera. So, cholera is caused by another bacteria, which is Vibrio cholerae. Yeah. So, in all of those choices, the only parasite there is letter B, which is roundworm. Okay? So, in order for you to have time to digest yung mga na-discuss natin from items 1 to 8, let us have a five-minute break.
All right. So for number nine, let's move. A fungus in plant that has no chlorophyll depends on its host, on his existence. So what do we call this specific uh, relationship or what do we call that specific fungus? So A, is it an obligate? B, dependent? C, facultative? Or letter D, saprophytic? So the answer for that one is letter A, which is obligate. So letter A and letter C here are the different types of a parasite. So fungus is an example of a parasite. Thus, it can be classified as an obligate parasite or a facultative parasite. So later, I think sa dulo ng session na ito or sa ano, sa mga last items, ibibigay ko yung definitions ng mga to. So, obligate, ayun yung nagdidepende sa kanyang host for his existence. So, kung walang host, it will not thrive. Okay? Next, number 10. Insect pests that attack crops or plants at ground level is the A. Cutworm, B. Webworm, C. Headworm, or letter D. Earthworm. So, the answer for this one is letter A, which is cutworm. I think this was already discussed during our uh, plant and our crop protection session. So, this is just a review of this specific insect. And I hope na nakuha nyo to. Next, which of the following is not a micro? Organism. Which of the following is not a microorganism? So A, virus, B, fungi, C, lice, or letter D, bacteria. So the answer for this one, as obviously it is the answer, is letter C, which is lice. Because we can see lice through our naked eye, right? So microorganisms are those uh, organisms that can only be seen when you are using uh, magnification apparatus such as the microscope among others. So, your life, we can see it with our naked eye, so it is not a microorganism. It is classified as a macro organism. Organism. Yeah. So, next, number 12, uh, which cattle breed is a product of crossing a Brahman and Angus breed. So this is on cattle. A, Hereford, B, Braford, C, Brangus, or letter D, Holstein. So dito, pwede yung pagbasan ang mga nasa question, which is Brahman and Angus. Thus, the uh, answer for this one I letter C, which is brangus. So in breeding, pwede kasing ganun yung gawin, most especially in animal science, I've uh, encountered different breeds na pinagsasama lang nila yung dalawang uh, breeds na pinag-cross. So that's it. Brahman and angus is brangus. Next, number 13, oil extracted from the oil crops are used for perfume and operation of facial oil. So, shampoo and soap. This type of oil is called A, edible, B, essential, C, volatile, or letter D, organic. So, those types of oil na in extract some oil crops are called essential oils. So, most uh, common na ginagawa sa mga essential oils, uh, if you're familiar with tandor ba yun? Yung pang ano? Pang ilay daw? Yung mga yan o kaya ano ba ba? Yung mga galing sa kandor ba? Anong halaman yun? Castor? Ano kandor? Castor? castor oil, ayun. Yung castor oil, ayan. So, it is an essential oil na in-extract sa castor beans. Ayan. So, 
That is an example. And of course, yung mga uh, yung mga ginagamit natin na for ano tawag dito? Agents para sa mga shampoo, sabon, yung mga yan. So they are called essential oils. Ayan. So number 14, how many days are needed to flush water after applying the chemical in ponds to ensure safety for stocking fish? So how many days? A, 2 days. Uh, B, 5 days. C, 8 days. Or letter D, 4 days. If you will remember, uh, this item is a range. Diba? Range siya. So, in answering this question, you need to consider the specific value na nasa range na iyon. And in that case, the answer is letter B, which is 5. So, I think I twisted this item from another session. And this must be 5 uh, to 7 days. So, ganun. Uh, in answering for examinations, ganun. Uh, always look for the best answer. So, kung ano yung value, ano yung number, ano yung choice na pinakamalapit doon or best doon sa alam nyo na tamang sagot, go with that. Okay? Number 15. So, this is another uh, technical na question. I hope that you still have or you are taking notes of the value na data sheet so para maidagdag nyo ito doon so the process from egg fertilization to ready to stock small shrimp is typically blank after final larval metamorphosis onto the uh, post larval larval stage and the total time needed is normally more than one month from the time of initial brood stock readiness so Typically, the process from egg fertilization to ready to stock small shrimp is 12 days. Okay, so that is 12 days. Add this to your ano, data sheet on the values, different values per uh, field. Number 16, breeding or the release of eggs in the presence of male is blank. A, arts, B, ovulation, C, spawn, or letter D, uh, metabolism. Release of eggs, breeding, in the presence of male is letter C, which is spawning. So if you will remember, yung spawning, ayun yung uh, kukunin ng isang breeder, yung eggs from the, i-release yung eggs from the female na fish, tapos, Uh, pagkatapos may release perhaps this could be uh, this could be in vitro kasi sarabing in vitro sa labas ng katawan sa isang so pwede siya sa anong tawag dito sa basin ganyan so ilalagay doon yung uh, mga eggs ng female na fish natin for say for example female salmon ganyan so ilalagay doon tapos uh, in the presence of the male parent or yung male na salmon natin, mag-re-release din siya ng uh, sperm para ma-fertilize yung uh, eggs na nandoon sa basin na yon. So that is called spawning. Ayan. So this is just a review of our uh, session on fisheries. Number 17, The range of vision of fishes is blank. A, shorter than mammals. B, same as mammals. C, approximately the same range of vision of mammals. Or letter D, longer than mammals. I hope you remember the illustration that I have given uh, dati sa fishery session natin. On this one, the answer is letter D, which is longer than mammals. So if you will recall... Ang, ang range of vision ng mammals, or let's, say, let's have an example, which is humans, ang range of vision ng humans ay 180 degrees. So if you, uh, if you 
test it now on your eyes so you can you have a peripheral vision so you can see what's on the on the left side or right side right so ang range ng vision of fishes is can reach up to 360 degrees and it is because pwede silang gumamit ng reflection nung sa water because they are underwater right so pwede silang gumamit ng reflection there. so the vision of fishes is longer than mammals Okay, next. Number 18. So which of the following? Grows in the pond bottom. Which of the following grows in the pond bottom? A. Algae. B. Mollusk. C. Predator. Or letter D. Competitor. So the answer for this one is letter A, which is algae. So just a review of the favoring favorable conditions para sa growth ng algae. Una, kailangan ng, of course, water. Kailangan ng watery na place or na condition. So kailangan ng water. Next ay kailangan ng sunlight. Kasi ba't nila kailangan ng sunlight? Because they are photosynthetic organisms. And also high temperature or hot temperature. So this one is something that is being avoided when you are uh, growing in hydroponics. In a pond environment, it could be tolerated at some level because these algae can serve as a food para sa mga fishes. But in a hydroponic setup, so from fisheries, let's go to crop science. In a hydroponic setup, ang algae is considered as a pest. So it is not favorable para sa ating mga halaman. At in that specific setup, nangyayari siya kapag pumapasok ang sunlight sa loob ng iyong hydroponic reservoir. Kapag sinabi natin reservoir, doon nakalagay yung tubig. Kaya siya hydroponics. Tapos ang tawag doon sa parang timba doon is reservoir in technical terms. Anyway, so uh, kapag pumapasok ang sunlight sa loob ng reservoir, nag elevate ang water temperature. So magiging check ang hot temperature. May sunlight kasi nga pumasok yung uh, sunlight papunta sa loob. And of course, nandun yung water kasi nga hydroponics siya. So ang mangyayari doon is that there that is a favorable environment para sa algae growth so sometimes when you check at your uh roots ayan may mga algae na na nandoon so it can grow sa roots mismo or it can also grow sa paligid ng iyong timba o yung reservoir na tinatawa so that happens and if you will also notice if mapapansin niyo karamihan ng mga Uh, lugar kung saan may tubig tapos na aarawan ng sunlight, ganun. So it uh, is a karaniwan doon merong mga algae. Ayan. Okay. So next. Number 19. The natural method in promoting reproduction and survival of fish and other aquatic product. Natural method in promoting reproduction and survival of fish and other aquatic products, the answer is letter A, which is fish propagation. So it is a natural method. So na pa lang, uh, promoting reproduction, which of the choices ang nagpo-promote ng reproduction directly? Is it, of course, doon na meron ka ng idea na fish propagation kasi kapag preservation, it is not promoting reproduction. Kapag fish capture, hindi rin siya nagpo-promote ng reproduction as well as conservation. Uh, ayan. So, ang propagation lang yun na po-promote na uh, fish reproduction. Next, again, uh, how many grams is desired is the desired market size of milkfish? A, 300, 350 
to 450, B, 500 to 600, C, 200 to 300, or letter D, 450 to 500. So, this is again uh, a, an item that was already discussed. The answer is letter C, which is 200 to 300. Specifically, according to the uh, resource that I have sent then sa ating group chat, may sinanda kong PDF doon on milkfish production. And doon, nakalagay na 250 to 300 ang market size or ang market, yes, ang market size ng bangus. Pero, in these choices, you will observe na wala dito yung 250 to 300. Thus, go to the most, to the nearest. Yan, which is 200, or kung saan nakapaloob yung choice na yun. Or yung, yung value na yun. The answer is letter C, which is 200 to 300. Okay, number 21. The simultaneous rearing of two or more different species to make more efficient use of, an, of the entire pond environment is called A, monoculture, C, I, B, extensive culture, C, polyculture, or letter D, intensive culture. So this one, you could answer this using prefixes or context clues. The answer is letter C, which is polyculture. So you have a clue there. It was stated in the exact question na two or more different species. So when we are culturing two or more, the applicable prefix for that is polyculture. Polyculture. So just a quick review of what these other terms in the choices are in the field of fisheries. So A, kapag sinabing monoculture, it is uh, culturing only one. So isang isda lang yung eco-culture mo. For example, if you choose to uh, breed tilapia, tilapia lang. Kano? If you uh, choose to breed prawns, prawns lang. Kung shrimp, shrimp lang. Kung uh, bangus, bangus lang. So that is monoculture. In extensive culture, it is culturing a specific aquatic organism and letting it live on its own. An example of extensive culture ay oyster farming. So kapag oyster farming, uh, you are letting it grow on its own. So let us uh, contrast yung extensive culture on intensive culture naman. When we say intensive culture, it is controlling the environment of the specific aquatic organism. So this happens in the case of shrimps. Ayan, okay, mga prawns natin. So again, nung I worked on DFAR during my parang internship or immersion dati, nung grade 10, ganyan. So we were toured sa... Far, at dun sa shrimp or sa prawn farm nila, the prawns are in a specific aquarium na merong minimaintain na specific dissolved oxygen levels, specific na temperature, yung mga yun. Tapos inaanohan rin sila ng oxygen there. Yung parang sa, anong tawag dito? Yung parang sa aquarium mismo, yung aerator. Ayun, so meron din ganun. So that is called intensive culture. So kapag sinabing intensive, dun na yung maraming kinokontrol na factors for the growth and the reproduction of a specific organism. Yun. Extensive, you let them grow as they are, as they are growing. So, yun yun. Example is oyster farming. Okay, number 22. What is the importance of stocking fish culture? What is the importance of stocking a uh, fish culture. A, calculate fish feeds. B, grow healthy fish. C, control of the deep of the water of the, on the dog. control the depth of the water pond. Or letter D, to avoid competition in the field. So again, as a review, what is fish stocking? What is stocking? Fish culture. When we say fish stocking, ito yung magre-raise ka ng fish sa isang hatchery tapos i-release mo sila 
sa river, lake, or ocean to supplement existing populations or to create a population where previously none exist. So that is fish stocking in an essence. All right. So ngayon, releasing daw. So kap- kapag sinabing releasing, you are lessening the competition in a specific pond. So here in the choices, that's why the answer is letter D, to avoid competition in feed. Kasi when we stop fish culture, we are lessening the population. So, kailangan nating isipin na when we are growing a lot of uh, fishes in a specific place and at, at the same time, ang mangyari doon is that there will be more competition. Thus, uh, competition sa space, competition sa water resources, competition sa feed resources, nutrient resources, yung mga yan. So, they are all uh, factors to consider. So, doon siya pinaka- makaka tulong to avoid competition of the feed. Yung sa A, yung calculating fish feed, of course, you can do that even without stocking the fish. Although we are really calculating the feed using uh, the daily feed ration formula. Ayan. So, uh, but you can do that every part of your growing uh, journey. So, hindi lang sa stocking ng fish culture. Grow healthy fish, it is a very general uh, choice, of course. Sabi ko nga, if it is a specific question, it must have a specific answer. And of course, yung control of the depth of the water pond, you cannot uh, control that by stocking fish culture. Okay? So last item before we take another uh, five-minute break. So, a planting method widely used by most fruit growers is the A square, B quincunx, C rectangular, or letter D hexagonal. So, I've shown a lot of illustrations of these different planting methods. So, kailangan nyo na lang isipin kung ano kaya yung pinaka-practical sa isang fruit farmer sa isang fruit grower. So, again, think like a farm manager. The answer is letter B, which is quincunx. Again, if we will look at the layout, kapag square farming, so I will draw, and then, and then ito. Yeah, so yan. So, this is square farming. Ayan, so ganyan. So, ang nangyayari sa square farming, para may square lang, tapos, nandito na yung tree number one, isang puno to ha. Siyempre kapag fruit, di ba, mga, ano yan, mga puno yan, hindi lang yan maliliit na halaman. And most of the time, it requires a lot of space. So, ang distance niyan from each other could be one to two meters or even more depending on the species. So, ganito ang square. Ang rectangular naman is a broader form of this one. Hexagonal, from the term itself, hexagonal. So, anim siyang ganyan. Yan. Ang pangit na hexagon. Para hexagon po ito. Pangit. Ayan. Kunwari yan. So, this one, yung, yung hexagonal, it will uh, have more plants pero mas marami ring space ang kailangan niyan kasi mas ma- mas maano to eh mas ma- mas marami siyang points diba? so this is hexagonal so this could uh, consume a lot of your space rectangular is parang ganito nga rin lang so ang quincunx is square Tapos, meron lang siyang additional na plant sa gitna. So, what you'll do is you uh, have a cross-section. Tapos, sa gitna, ilalagay nyo yung isa pang tree. So, dito, you save space and also maximize the space na nasa gitna pa nung layout na to. So, that is called quincunx. 
Okay. So before we move to the next item, let us have a specific break. A specific, a short break.
Okay, so let us continue. Okay, so number 24. A length of time fish product can stay off fit for human consumption is called A, timing catch, B, catching period, C, spawning period, or letter D, shelf life. A length of time fish product can stay off fit for human consumption is called A, timing catch, B, catching period, C, spawning period, letter D, shelf life. So the answer for this one is letter D, which is shelf life. So you need to ask yourself, kung alin ba dito sa mga ito ang may relasyon sa human consumption? Which means the question is asking for a specific time na yung product na yun is process na. And then, for example, it's already a bagoong, ganyan, o kaya isa na siyang uh, dried fish product, ganyan. So, the time is called shelf life. From the term itself, shelf. So, kung gaano siya katatagal sa shelf. Ayan. Okay. Number 25, mealy bug is common among fruit trees and other commercial crops, insects, socks, fruit juice, and foliage. And foliage. To control, spray, A, malathione, B, herbicide, C, bromide, or letter D, chlordane. So these are uh, different chemicals. So I hope na you, have, uh, you, uh, you are answering yung correct na answer because we have discussed in detail the different the different agents kung saan ito. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry for that. Wait lang, wait lang. Anyway, so let's uh wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. Let us go back. So now. Okay. So these are uh, different chemicals that is used for chemical control sa ating crop protection. Ayan. So, A, malathione, B, herbicide, C, bromide, letter D, chlordane. The answer for this one is letter A, which is malathione. So, later I will reveal or I will uh, flash the different uses of this one. Uh, ayan. So, ang mealybug ay isang, sabi dito, insect pest. Ayan. So, Wait, nawala yata ako. Screen sharing is this. What happened? Uh, okay. I hope hindi na mag ano. And so... Okay, so the answer is malathion, and later I will reveal the different uses of the other chemicals that you can see on this slide. Okay.
Okay, next. Number 26, leaf miner is very destructive tropical region. In the tropical region, to control this, controlling this, Control this by means of spraying with A. Fumigants B. Azodrine C. Chlordane or letter D. Carbaryl EPN So leaf miner, the correct answer is letter B which is azodrine. Okay? So take note for leaf miner mamaya maglalagay akong list dyan. Meron akong list dyan. On the different ano uh, pinapatay nila ganun. So, azodrine is for leaf miner. Again, yung kanina, malatayon for insect pest. Okay? Next, we have number 27, bacterial wilting of young leaves and slight uh, yellowing of old leaves can be solved except which of the following? So, A, cutting the, uh, the affected. B, planting resistant persistent varieties. Siguro yan. C, seed treatment or letter D, crop rotation. So here, bacterial wilting of young leaves and slight yellowing. The answer is letter uh, D, which is crop rotation. Okay. For number 28, Lepidopteran or Lepidopterus species are similar to moths. And butterfly. Actually, these are examples of Lepidopteran species. So this can be controlled by using insecticides such as blank, A. Chlordane, B. Fumigant, C. Azadrine, or letter D. Methyl and Malthion. So again, uh, to review for uh, this one, methyl and malathion are insecticides. That's a new second. Okay, so here is the list that I am talking about. A, yung chlordane. Ang chlordane ay para sa termites. Ayan, so take note of this one. I will uh, give you more time to take note of this. So termites. Yung fumigants naman is para sa rodents. Ay, o kaya sa mga vertebrate pests. So again, kapag sirabi natin vertebrate pests, these are uh, pests katulad ng mga daga. Yan, mga yan. So those are vertebrate pests. And yung azadrine are for aphids, mites, leaf hoppers, thrips, uh, leaf miners, and plant bugs. And yung methyl and malathion are insecticides. So these are for insects. So I'll give you another minute to copy that. Okay. Okay. So number 29, bacterial leaf spot uh, is caused by bacteria, Santomonas vesicatoria. This, this is controlled by the following except A, crop rotation, B, using copper. Hydroxide, C, watering frequently, or letter D, seed treatment. So the answer for this one is watering frequently. So uh, bacteria actually thrives kapag merong moisture, kapag merong water. Kasi it also serves as a vector para mas maparami sila, para mas matranspit sila sa ibang lugar, ganyan. So, uh, that is why kapag we are watering 
our plants frequently, you will notice that there are microorganisms. Uh, for example, yung algae, di ba? Pwede silang mag-move, ay mag-move, mag-grow dun sa soil natin o kaya minsan fungi din. Kapag fungi, it can be manifested by uh, white spots, white hairy spots. Ayan, yung mga molds natin, yung mga yun. So, watering frequently is a favorable uh, condition for bacterial leaf spots. So, number 30, fruit fly, mango, common oriental fly, which is very destructive in mango fruits, can be controlled by observing cleanliness and using chemicals like blank. So, what chemical is uh, ang magagamit natin sa fruit fly? So, A, chlordane, B, azadrine, C, malathion, letter D, methaldehyde. The answer is letter insects which is So again, for chlordane, it is used for termites. Ang azodrine naman is for aphids, mites, leaf hoppers, thrips, leaf miners, and plant bugs. Ayan. Malathion is generally for insects. And yung methaldehyde, it's, uh, it's used for snails at saka slugs. Ayan. Snails and slugs. Ayan ang gamit ng methaldehyde. Okay? So I'll give you another minute to half minute. Okay? Which is an example of natural altered state of awareness? Which is an example of a natural altered state of awareness? A, high drug, B, sedation, C, sleep, or letter D, intoxication. So dito, you can, uh, you can look at the similarities among the choices. So, una sa high drug, sedation, tsaka intoxication, merong chemical na involved. Thus, it is not natural. Kaya answer dito is letter C, which is sleep. Okay. Let's move for number 32. What organism mo would most likely be in an Arctic environment? So, A, crocodile, B, walrus, C, maya bird, letter D, turtle. So, uh, the answer for this one is letter B, which is walrus. Kasi ayun lang naman yung nakikita natin sa ice, di ba? Since ang Arctic environment is uh, predominantly merong ice. Next. Number 33, which of the following is an activity that help reduce water pollution? So A, treating waste water prior to discharge. B, use of soap and detergents. C, setting up flood control system or letter D, desalination of seawater to potable water. That help reduce water pollution, of course, ang nandyan ay... Treating. So, ayun, ayun na yung ano, uh, clue, ko, yung context clue natin. Treating wastewater prior to discharge. So, treating, meron treating, which means it helps reduce water pollution. So, ito yung pinaka-direct na a choice for this one. So, here, uh, a, B plus energy, and that sign must actually be an arrow. A, B. So which type of reaction does this reaction show? So A, B plus energy, then it will yield A plus B. So A, exothermic synthesis, B, endothermic synthesis, C, endothermic decomposition, D, exothermic decomposition. So again, if you will see, 
ang AB ang AB ay naging A plus B. So you need to uh, know muna kung uh, anong tawag sa process na ito. So kapag ang buo ay nahati, that is nahati or napaghiwalay, that is decomposition. So after that, ang kailangan nyo namang i-figure out is kung endothermic ba siya or exothermic. So dito, nag-ano siya na energy. So I will flash this illustration. Ayan. So kapag, ex, uh, kapag exothermic reaction, energy is released. Kapag endothermic naman, energy is absorbed. So here, kailangan ng energy. So the answer is letter C. Okay. Next, number 35. So heterotrophy. Which of the following is the most related to this term? A. Fern, B. Algae, C. Moss, or letter D. Grasshopper. So basically, the question is asking you which of the following species or which of the following organisms is an example of an, of an heterotroph. So the answer is letter D, which is grasshopper. So again, kapag ganito mga questions, one of the techniques that you can employ is uh, looking at the similarities or the differences between the different choices. So dito, since these are organisms, you can you can look at them kung okay, alin dito ang pinaka kakaiba. You can look at their appearance, you can look at their classification. So yung fern, algae, tsaka moss, these are all somehow a plant, right? Whereas yung grasshopper, it is different. So if we will look at the definition of, an heter of a heterotroph, it is an organism that can produce its own food instead of taking nutrition from other sources of, of, of organic carbon. So it cannot produce its own food. So alin lang dito yung hindi nakaproduce ng own food niya? It's the grasshopper. Number 36. The union of sperm and ovum in outside an animal body is called A, gestation, B, in vitro fertilization, C, fertilization, or letter D, parturition. So the answer for this one is letter B, which is in vitro fertilization. The key word there is outside an animal body. So outside in vitro, wala sa uh, body. So fertilization, it describes the union of sperm and an ovum. So sabi outside, so in, kaya siya in vitro fertilization at hindi lang siya fertilization. On the other hand, kapag sinabi natin uh, parturition, kapag sinabi natin parturition, it is the act of giving birth. So again, as a review, we have different types of parturition. So, ang parturition sa baka is called calving. So, let's take it down. Take it down. Note it down. Calving is the act of giving birth sa cow. We have foaling or out of giving birth a horse. What else? Kidding. Or goat. And a bow. Lambing. For sheep. What else?
Yeah, so those are just some. So that's parturition. It's the act of giving birth. On the other hand, gestation is the conception prior to parturition. So kapag nagde-develop na ang uh, yun, ang united sperm and ovum, kapag na-develop na siya or nagde-develop, that process is called gestation. So it's from the act of conception to uh, parturition. Okay. Next. Culturing only one species, whether in animals, fishery, or plants, is called A. Monoculture, B. Extensive culture, C. Polyculture, or letter D. Intensive culture. Culturing only one species, whether in animals, fishery, or plants, is called letter A, which is monoculture. So from the prefix itself, mono, which, which means one, so, ayan. again, itong mga to, we have already discussed this kanina. Extensive culture in the area of fisheries or in the field of fisheries is letting that aquatic organism grow by itself. Intensive culture naman is a controlling a lot of environmental factors around a specific organism. Ayan. So, extensive, an example ay oysters. And yung intensive naman, ang example dun ay shrimp or prawns. Ayan. And yung polyculture, it is growing two or more na mga species at a time to maximize the efficiency or the, uh, yes, the efficiency of using the space and of course, the resources that you have for a specific farm. Number 38, the stem of one plant inserted into another to unite from one plant and grow. So A, layering, B, budding, C, spawning, or letter D, drifting. The answer for this one is letter B, which is budding. So yung layering, yung spawning is a process that is on fisheries. Drifting is not even a process in agriculture. Layering is another asexual propagation technique, pero it involves the usage of ay the yes the rooting ng isang plant dun sa mismong branch na yon. So if you are inserting another or stem of one plant into another to unite and uh, grow, the best answer amongst these answers ay these uh, choices ay letter B, which is budding. Number 39, release of a mature egg from the female ovary. So release. So the release enables the egg to be fertilized by the uh, male sperm cells. So A, metabolism, B, breeding, C, spawning, or letter D, ovulation. So the question is looking at the term on the release of a mature egg from a female ovary. The answer is letter D, which is ovulation. Okay. So metabolism happens in uh, plants. Ayan. So um uh so kailangan niya ng nutrition and other hormones. Next is yung breeding, it's a general term. Spawning is an another concept that we have already discussed kanina. And yung ovulation, ayan, from the term itself, uh release of a mature egg from the female ovary. Okay, so let's have item number 40 before we take a long break. Ayan, so number 40, what is the best location suited for poultry house? So what is the best location suited for poultry house? So A, an area that is expected exposed directly under the sun. An area that is exposed under the sun. B, an area far from neighborhood to avoid diseases. C, area that receives early morning sunshine. Or letter D, sunlight, sun, sunlight and sunshine are abundantly, are abundantly present. 
So again, in looking for a specific uh, house or location for a poultry house, what we need to avoid is exposure to sunlight. Thus, the answer is letter B, which is area far from neighborhood to avoid diseases. What will happen if a specific poultry house is directly or meron siyang uh, morning, sun, morning sunlight, ganyan? The tendency is that your chicken or yung mga poultry species mo na, that you're growing will experience heat stress. So that is something that we need to avoid. Not only in poultry, but even in other uh, an farm animals. Ayan. So that is why uh, kailangan when you are uh, having or when you are locating a specific poultry house, kailangan maayos yung pagkakonstruct ng roofing, kailangan may ventilation, yung mga yan. Because the, they are they must not be under extreme heat as you grow them. So, the naman sa area far from neighborhood to avoid diseases, this is actually a good uh, example of a location for poultry house. First, kasi far from neighborhood, kasi you need to also consider the welfare of your neighbors. For example, if you have a lot of chickens, tapos, so you are producing a lot, di ba? So, kapag sobrang dami nila, tapos meron kang kapitbahay, the possibility ay mga moy yung kanilang waste. Di ba? And of course, that, that could also bring uh, annoyance ayan, sa iyong mga kapitbahay. Ganyan. So we, we, we need to consider that. That it is also far from neighborhood. And aside from that, it is also a key uh, technique para maka-avoid ng diseases. Kasi, if, kunwari, merong chicken or, for example, you are a production, you are producing a lot of chicken, tapos, uh, yung kapitbahay mo, nag organic siya, so it means, meron siyang dalawa or anong chicken. Kapag nagkasakit yung chicken niya, the possibility is, through wind, ganyan, o kaya even sa water, ganyan, it can be transferred from his area to your area. Ayan. So, yan. Before we move to item number 41, let's have a longer break for you to digest the different concepts that we have discussed from item number uh, 1 to item number 40. So, we still have 35 items to go. So, make the most of this break.
And so I hope that you have used that long break for something that is productive. And of course, I hope that you had a rest. Then, okay, so let me just share my screen once again. So, yeah, now. So let us continue with item number 41.